Well, education reform is taking shape in the Iowa legislature with a bill allowing parents greater power on deciding where their students would attend school, all while using your tax money. Local 5's Rachel Droz spoke with people on both sides of the issue to break down this legislation. Lengthy debate. A vote against this is telling parents who are stuck in a failing school district, sorry, you have no choice. As lawmakers consider creating an education savings account program in Iowa. If we have a failing school, the focus should be on fixing the school so that the education of every child is lifted up. This bill goes in exactly the wrong direction. In short, this is a bill that would attach state funding to a specific student, not necessarily the school district they live in. As a child in the state, you are entitled to a publicly funded education. That's exactly what this system is. The bill would do more than just allow public funds to be used for private schools. Education savings accounts can also be used to buy textbooks, pay curriculum fees, cover tutoring costs, and pay standardized test fees. Only about 10,000 kids would be eligible for the program, and parents would have to send in an application to the state to get the account. You said we didn't ask any, any school districts what their opinions were here. I don't care what the school district says unless the school district is saying I want what is best for every single child, not necessarily what's best to protect my system. But others say these savings accounts are just another name for school vouchers. Vouchers are nothing more than a way to drain public education dollars out of the state coffers and pour them directly into unaccountable private schools. And one superintendent says this also opens the door to privatize Iowa's education system. If you fund one private school, then, you know, where does that stop? And so then do we do we fund private colleges? Do we fund, you know, it, it, it is such a slippery slope. Rachel Droz, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa. Senators voted the bill out of committee today, making it eligible for debate on the Senate floor. Still has a way to go, however, before becoming law. Meanwhile, the LGBTQ advocacy group One Iowa is against the bill for a unique reason. They say they don't want public dollars going to private institutions because those institutions don't guarantee protections against LGBTQ students. That's according to a new study the group conducted is about 75% of institutions that in some way indicate that they'd be willing to discriminate against LGBTQ folks. If you just look at the folks that have specifically said they won't discriminate um, in the areas of a sexual orientation or gender identity, that's only 15% of institutions. So there's like another 10% there um, that we're giving leeway, uh, specifically because we can't determine what their policy is saying. A crow says if public dollars do eventually go to private institutions, they need to come with stipulations. And some of those specifications, among many, many others, are that any child be allowed to attend regardless of um, their, their individual characteristics, that there be some accountability and transparency built into those dollars. Crow acknowledges it is tough for them to imagine Republicans adding those into the bill. They also view this bill as part of a larger attack on LGBTQ students. With the focus on chartered and private schools in the Iowa legislature, it's worth examining the differences between those and public schools. Dr. Lindemann and leaders with the Iowa State Education Association say differences do indeed exist, despite many within the legislature saying otherwise. But those mainly focus on access to private schools. Differences on learning outcomes are harder to measure. Ryan Wise, dean of the Drake University School of Education, says there's a challenge in comparing learning outcomes. He says the Iowa School Performance Profiles, which is essentially Iowa's version of a report card for schools, doesn't include private schools. But studies on the topic do exist. Joining us now is Dr. Robert Pianta, Dean of School of Education and Human Development at the University of Virginia. He and a colleague have studied the learning outcomes of private schools. So Dr. Pianta, thank you for joining us. Sure, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, your study is titled, Does Attendance in Private Schools Predict Student Outcomes at Age 15? So what's the answer? Yeah. Um, well, uh, if, uh, if you don't account for the kinds of backgrounds that children have uh, prior to coming to school, 
um, family income, family education, things like that. One would follow a group as we did, uh, a group of children who went to private school and compare them to a group who went to public school. Uh, and you would find that attendance in private school looked, looked like it uh, was beneficial for kids. You see big differences at age 15 um, in academics and social behavior and aspirations and, and attendance, to, uh, excuse me, in college. But once you account for those family background factors, so you account for families' uh, income, for example, uh, when you take into that into consideration, all those differences go away. Uh, and, and it doesn't look any better for the children who went to uh, private school uh, in contrast to those who went to public school for the whole time. Okay, you and Ansari note public education reform often includes vouchers or tax credit financing for private enrollment. So what should lawmakers know before they pursue this path? Well, I think they really need to take into account uh, what is the purpose of the program that they're trying to, you know, they're trying to uh, create. Or is it to expand the number of schools available to children? Uh, is it to try to provide better schooling for kids who would otherwise not get better schooling? Uh, and, and then uh, adjust the, 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 the policy in a way that targets the specific purpose. Um, I think one of the things that we don't often think about in some of these, uh, some of these policies is the unintended consequences. Uh, for example, there's some evidence to suggest that uh, policies that uh, where uh, taxpayer dollars diverted to private schools take some funds away from uh, public schools. And so, you know, it's, it's very important to, 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 to really be targeted and to take into account some of those unintended consequences. All right, Dr. Robert Pianta, we want to thank you for your time tonight, help, giving us a little insight on a complicated issue. The pleasure. Thank you. Well, there are a number of bills related to education moving through the Iowa legislature. Among those is a bill requiring districts to provide an in-person learning option. The governor made clear she supports such a bill in her condition of the state address at the beginning of the session. If the bill is passed and signed into law, it would require every Iowa public and private school district to offer full-time in-person instruction as an option for parents to choose from. Now, let us know your thoughts on what's happening with education in the Iowa legislature. How would this impact your students? Text us at the number here.